All right, good evening, fifth years. Tonight we're going to be adding and subtracting fractions. We've already been some, doing some adding with fractions before. We haven't been working a whole lot with subtracting fractions, and, and they are different. And I'm going to be explaining those differences tonight, okay? Let's take a look at some of this work here. First off, we're going to be doing some practice here. How many sevenths go into 49? Well, we know seven do. Okay. How many 70s go into 40, 490? Seven. Seven. Seventy. How many fours go into 32? Got eight. How many eights go into 56? Seven. How many fours go into 3,200? Okay, well, let's take a look here. Right here it was eight. Now we added two zeros. So let's see. This next number over here would have to be 800. Check it here. We have a zero here, so it's going to cancel these out. So right here was eight. Now we just have one zero, so it would be 80. Ooh. How many eights go into 560? Well, right here was seven, right? So how many eights go in? Well, it would be looks like it would be 70. Down here, these zeros cancel each other out, right, kids? So we're back at this problem right here, which gives me seven. Nice practice. Okay, let's take a look here. When we're adding fractions, the one thing we always have to do is we have to find out if there's common denominators. Four and four, we have a common denominator, so four is in my answer. Three plus three is six. Here's the new stuff tonight, okay? When you're subtracting, yes, you need to have a common denominator, just like when you're adding. But a common mistake that kids make is this. When they look at this problem right here, they're automatically going to go one minus, or one and one eighth as an answer here. Because they're going to see the five and the six, and they're going to subtract, and they're going to do that. And you know what? This is actually the wrong answer. This will be a common thing that kids do, and it's going to be common for you to get it wrong if you're going to continue to do that. I'm going to show you in this lesson why that's wrong and how to do that. It's super easy. It's super simple. Let's take a look at this next thing. How old are you? The reason why I always ask this question every single year is kids don't realize their age as a fraction. Okay, Most 10-year-olds, I ask you how old you are, you'll say 10. Then I say put that as a fraction. Well, guess what a common answer is? Kids go 10 over 10. Well, if you're 10 over 10, that means you're you're 1. It means you're younger than Beckett. Ah, that's, nope, that's not how old you are. Okay, You're all older than my son. Or if you're 11 years old, you will say 11 over um, 11. You're still one years old. Once again, that's still wrong. Okay? If you're going to tell me your age as a fraction, you're going to go 10 over 1. How many 1s go into 10? 10 do. You're going to say 11 over 1. How many 1s go into 11? 11. Keep that in mind. I'm going to be re referring to that often in class if you're, if you're struggling with finding a whole number. Okay? Or what? how to change a whole number into a fraction. Let's take a look at some of this. Another thing we're going to be going here. I got a favorite brand that I really like. I really like Under Armour now, but one of my favorite ones growing up was Nike. And the reason why I really like Nike is their slogan is just do it. Okay? And the reason why I say that is a lot of times when it comes to fractions, kids kind of look at this and they're like, oh, I don't really like fractions. I don't really like multiplying. Well, you know what? Just do it. Just get through it. Work together on it. Ask questions and just do it. There's, there's simple steps that you need to do in order to get the problem correct. Okay? I'm going to show you those steps. When you're adding fractions, there's only one thing you do when you're adding fractions. You have to just check the one. One thing you must do is find a... common denominator. Okay. When you're adding fractions, that's all basic. Okay. So we're looking here. One and a half plus two and a half, not the same denominator, so I have to change half into a four. So this changes into two, one and two fourths plus two and one fourth. I add these up, I get 3 and 3 fourths for an answer. Okay. 
Do this problem here. Common denominator is 8 and 2. Well, I know 2 can go into 8, so I'm going to change half into something with an 8 times 4. Times 4 gives me 4 eighths. This new number is 4 eighths. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 eighths. 4 and 8. I know 4 can go into 8, so I only have to change one of these. Times 2. Times 2. Gives me 2 eighths. 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 eighths, or 1 and 1 eighth. Perfect. Adding fractions is easy. Now let's look at subtracting fractions. There's three things you must do just to do it correctly. Okay, let's watch. The first one that I want you to do is to see if left is bigger than right. The number on the left needs to be bigger than the number on the right. When you're subtracting, you always want to be taking a smaller number from a bigger number, okay? For example, if I have 10 apples, I want to take less than 10 away from 10. If I take 11 apples away from 10 apples, I'm going to have a negative number, okay? If I take 8 apples away from 10 apples, I'll still have a positive number, which is 2. Hopefully that made sense. Next thing I need to make sure, common denominators. Last one, numerator on the left is bigger than the right. Numerator on the left, bigger or larger than right. I will always go through these three steps with you when we're subtracting fractions, okay? This is important. It's very important. Left is larger than the right. Common numbers. Numerator is on the left. is bigger than the one on the right. Okay? And there's reasons why we need to do this. First off, right here, I'm going to ask the first question. Is the number on the left larger than the number on the right? One and one-fourth is larger than half. Okay? Second question. Do they have a common denominator? They don't. Four and two. So I have to change to the two into something with the four times two times 2 gives me 2 fourths. I'm going to rewrite my problem. 1 and 1 fourth minus 2 fourths. The third thing I have to do when I'm subtracting fractions is my numerator on the left larger than the one on the right. My 1 is smaller than my 2. So you have to borrow. Just like always in any of your long subtraction, you have to borrow, right? If the number on top is smaller than the number on the bottom, you have to borrow. This is how you borrow in fractions. This big whole number right here, remember what I was saying earlier about the age and Beckett, okay? That one isn't just a one. You have to take a look at this four. This one represents four over four. I'm gonna take that one and put it into the fraction. So if I get rid of this 1, kids, and put it into this fraction, that means I'm adding this 4 to the 1, which means this is now 5 fourths. Do you see how I did that? Watch closely. 4 times 1 plus 1 is 5 fourths. See how it's 5 fourths? I just took that 1 and put it into the fraction. Now I have 5 fourths minus 2 fourths, which equals 3 fourths, which is the correct answer. We're going to be doing a lot of practice with this, kids. But it's important that you borrow correctly. Here's another problem. Is the number on the left larger than the number on the right? It sure is. Do they have common denominators? They don't. I have to change one-fourth into something with an eight. Two ways. So I have one. And, oh, my bad. I have two. Let me write the problem, right? Two and two ways, minus seven eighths. I have common denominators out. Now is my numerator on the left, numerator on the left, larger than the one on the right? It is not. So I'm gonna borrow from the two. I take a close mind, this is an eight as my denominator now. So each one of these is worth eight over eight. I'm only borrowing one. So I'm gonna cross off the two and keep the one here. The one of them that I took away that I'm borrowing back in, I have to take this 8 
and add it to the two. So I now I have one and ten eighths minus seven eighths. Does that make sense, kids? Take a look. I'll check my work. Four times two is eight plus one is nine fourths. Okay. Actually, I'll have to check it here. Four times two is 16 plus two is 18 over eight. Eight times one is eight plus 10 is 18 over eight. You see how that works now? Now I can subtract across. I'll get a one here. 10 minus seven gives me a three eighths. One and three eighths. Just to re-explain, the reason why I couldn't check it here to get nine fourths, well, I could. Um, I'll show you this here, so it's not confusing. Get nine fourths. Obviously, nine fourths isn't the same as this, right? But if I change it into an eight times two, times two, now I have eighteen over eight, which is the same as these problems. One is three eighths. Let's take a look at this problem here. First thing is the number on the left larger than the number on the right. It is. Next thing, numerator is the same, or the denominator is the same. They are not same common denominators. I'm going to take this four, three fourths, and change it into sixteen. Going times four, times four gives me a twelve. So I have two and one sixteenths minus twelve sixteenths. Now I have common denominators, and the third thing I have to check is are the numerators, is the numerator on the left larger than the one on the right? It's not, so I have to borrow again. I'm going to change colors. I'm going to borrow one of these twos, so I'm left with one. Each one of these now is worth 16 over 16 because that is what the denominator is. So I'm going to be adding 16 to the 1, which gives me 17 over 16. Then I'm going to subtract 12 minus 16. I'm going to go through. I'm left with a 1 and 5 sixteenths. Let's go back up to the top to this very first problem, kids. And I'm going to show you why 1 and 1 eighth is incorrect. Let's take a look at what we learned. Is the number on the left larger than the one on the right? It is. Okay. Is the denominator the same? They are. Now, is my numerator on the left larger than the one on the right? It is not. So I have to borrow this 1 and put it in. Keep in mind, this 1 is worth 8 over 8. Do you see that, kids? So 8 plus 55 is 13 over 8. I'm going to subtract it from 6 eighths, which is going to give me an answer of 7 eighths. 7 eighths is my answer, not 1 and 1 eighth. So it's very important when you're doing this, kids, to take a look at those three steps. First step is the number on the left larger than the one on the right. Second step, same denominators. Third step is that numerator on the left larger than the one on the right. If it is not, you have to borrow. Now, if it is larger, which one I didn't give you one of those examples tonight, then you can just mult or subtract right across, just like we're doing right here. Subtract right across. But I wanted to show you this borrowing stage. Keep in mind, whatever you're adding to the numerator, it really depends on what the denominator is. Hopefully this helps. Sorry this video got a little longer than normal. But I thought it was important to give you at least a few examples to tell you the difference between adding and subtracting and to provide some examples on borrowing. I look forward to working with you in class tomorrow, especially with these subtracting fractions. Good luck.